Hey guys, I'm Avesh. This is the eighth video of .NET MA UI with Sync Fusion Control series. Let's quickly review our previous session before we get started. In the last session, we focused on list view control of Sync Fusion, which helps create interactive and feature list views in mobile applications. We did understand adding images from the content delivery network to make the app performative. Additionally, we have learned how to use a linear layout to connect shopping cart categories. In the linear layout, the components are arranged in a single horizontal row or vertical column in a linear pattern. I recommend reviewing the previous session before proceeding. In this session, we will focus on the features of list view such as drag and drop, which reorders the items by dragging them using the drag indicator view. Grid layout, we will also understand converting the linear layout to grid layout with predefined number of columns. Swiping is another great feature of list view and we will associate actions from left to right or right to left and perform swipe actions. Let's now switch to the code and get going with the drag and drop feature. In the previous session, we have added the category list items and rendered these images from the CDN. To make the things faster, I have downloaded a drag indicator image and uploaded the same to CDN. Now let me bring up the Visual Studio and consume the image URL and start working on reordering the items. Let's now enhance the XAML file to support item dragging. In order to do that, let's add some properties called drag start mode equal to, let's add both of them, drag indicator, on drag indicator as well as on hold. Let's define an event called item dragging. I'll let you know what needs to be done in the backend. So let's bind the event called list view item dragging. Now if you go to the XAML C -sharp file, you will see that an event is created for item dragging. Let's switch back to the XAML file again. Let's add a drag indicator and add the image that we have uploaded to the CDN. How do we do that? Now after these labels, let me add another indicator view called drag indicator view, which is a property of Sync Fusion Control. List view, drag indicator view, and let me close this quickly. And let me add a grid here. And let me add an image, close the image here. Now let's start with the image properties. First, let me give the height request here, put it to 20. And then let's also add the width request, make it as 20. Let's add the source here. Let me copy the source path of this image, which I copied earlier from the CDN. So let me define the source and then horizontal options for the image. Horizontal options, let me make it as center here. Now, at the grid level, I will define at the drag indicator level, I'll define grid dot, grid dot column equal to one. Let's also give the horizontal options equal to center. And then I'll say vertical options equal to center. And let's bind the list view here. List view equal to X colon reference. Let's reference in it to the list view. That's it. Now let's run this application and see the output. Notice that we have the drag icon at the end of each item. Now I can place the mouse and hold the drag indicator and drop the selected item in the required position. It is that simple. Let me do that quickly. Click on this drag icon and drop it to the needed position. That's all. Let me click on this furniture item and drag it below the home and kitchen. Look at that. It is pretty simple. In the real world, once we drag and drop the items, we persist the selection by sending the drag index to an API that takes care of storing the position of the drop. We will do that once we are building a full-fledged application in the future sessions. For now, let me simulate that and add a label to show the position it has been dragged and dropped from. Let me add a label here above the list view. Call it as label, close this, and give a name here so that we can bind it in the backend and we'll call it as display index with some margins. Let me put some margins here, margin, so that we can get enough padding and spacing here and character spacing equal to 0.01 font size. Let me make the size as medium and horizontal text alignment. Let's keep it as center for now. 
line break mode let's make it as word wrap and let's make the text color as text color as I will take it as some um, blue that's it now in the code behind this event will be triggered when we are dragging and dropping that item so let's say e dot action so everything is an action here equal to drag action dot either it is a start stop dragging or drag so we'll make it as we'll assume that the drag has been completed we'll call it as drop and the moment it is drop I would say this dot display index look at that we have the prompt for display index that is because we have already defined the name of display index over here and we'll say dot text equal to let me do a string dot uh, format here string dot format of I say item dragged from position 0 to the destination position and that we will capture from e dot old index being the previous index of the item and we will also capture the new index the whole idea to do this is this is a place we are going to hook in the API but for simulation we are adding this text now let me restart and run the application let me drag and drop here look at that item dragged from position 0 to 1 I may do this from here to the top so it is showing 3 to 0 because the index starts from 0 we have successfully integrated the drag and drop let's switch to the next feature which is the swipe the list view supports swiping from both left to right and right to left let's evaluate both let's target to do two actions for swipe I have already added the necessary icons to the CDN for archive and delete so that we can use them with the swipe command buttons sync fusion list view supports swipe template similar to the item templates let's collapse this item template and start creating the swipe templates there are two swipe templates available one is the start swipe template the other is the end swipe template so let's start with the start swipe template over here let me copy it from my other window to make it faster let me create this start swipe template or oh, it is created under the start swipe template similar to the item template we will have data template now we close this data template as well here once a data template is created we need to create a master grid which will hold the information related to the tabs and gestures so within that I will create a grid as well within one grid and I will create the grid column definitions as well over here and then look at that I have created a grid which holds the image the image is nothing but the archive image that we have uploaded to the CDN now our aim is to create a command on top of this image now how do we do that so anything which you type is called gesture in mobile so to create the gesture we have to create a grid gesture recognizers first we create the grid gesture recognizer let me close this grid gesture recognizer now when do we need to create this gesture the moment we tap on this button we will say the sync fusion list view that hey listen to the image click and pass it as a command to the backend C sharp file that means whenever we click on the image we call the archive command as a tab gesture so we will create a command now let me copy that command as well and explain you quickly so we have a tap command gesture recognizer which recognizes the tap and it will call the archive command which we are going to build it in a moment in the C sharp file now I have given the command and command parameters as binding and the source as this list view that means for that selected list view item whenever we press a tap on this image it will trigger this archive command I hope it is clear for you all now once this is done we will switch to code behind and we will build the archive command let me show you how to do that let's create a property to hold the selected list view item so I'm creating a private property called list category info and list view item here and I'll start writing the command method which will be private void archive and I would say object item since we are passing the the gesture item to this archive command I would say list view item equal to let me typecast this item into list category info and we will typecast the item into list category info once this is done we are already holding the list category details as an item collection so I would say the current collection is nothing but list category details here now the moment I get the current collection I'm going to remove that item and archive it ideally we will be calling an API which will mark this item as archive but to simulate that experience right now I'm removing that item so I would say remove that list view item that's it now we have created a private method and we are taking the selected list view item over here 
and we are deleting that item from the current collection. Once this is done, we need to bind this as an archive command. How do we do that? Let's create a public command here, public command, and I will say as archive command get and set and then under the generated source we will bind this archive command equal to new command of this method which we have just created which is archive that's it pretty simple so if i switch back to the xaml we have this archive command which is a public binding context property which we have defined it here and then we have added this archive command under generate source which we have already created in our previous session and we are attaching the archive as the command to this. That's all. Let's switch back to the XAML and run the application again. Let me try to swipe this from left to right. Interesting. This is not working. Let me see what is going wrong here. We have defined the start I swipe template. Everything looks good. But well, one thing we have forgot is to enable the list view for swiping. How do we do that? Let's say allow swiping is true. And let me define a swipe threshold equal to let me put a number 50 and then I will also give a swipe offset as 100 and let me restart the application and see if the swipe works. Let me hold the item and try to swipe it. Notice that we have this archive button here. Let me press this button to delete it. Let's see if it works or not. That's it. The item is archived. Of course, I need to put some toast messages and other things. I'll leave it to you guys to handle those situations but our purpose is solved here where we are able to swipe this item from left to right. Similarly, let's go back to the XAML and create a swipe from end swipe template which will work from right to left. To make it quick, I have added the end swipe template here. Everything is same except that we are going to add it at the right side corner of the list item and the image that we are binding is the delete PNG which I have uploaded to the CDN again. All right, let's run this application and see the behavior. Now we have swipe from left and then we have swipe from right. I have just given a background color here which is red. Feel free to add your own background color and the moment I click on this delete button, oh, I forgot to do one other thing is to add this archive button similar to archive. I will define another command called delete which will solve the purpose of delete and let me create another command and say this as delete command and then I will bind this delete command similar to the archive. Let me copy this delete command and I'll bind it to this delete method. Let me restart the application again. Let me swipe it and click on delete. Notice that the delete action integration is completed. So as the archive button action. And hence, we have successfully integrated the start swipe template and end swipe template feature for this list view. Let's now concentrate on the next feature, which is the grid layout. We have been focusing on developing a linear layout for the main category of items since the first part of the last session. A lot of apps in the real world display the main categories of things as a grid layout view and when a user taps on an item in the grid layout, the application navigates to the content page for the corresponding subcategory to display the subcategories organized either in a linear layout or in the form of a horizontal layout with a scroll. Now let's look at how we can accomplish it. Let's copy the same product category.xaml file, copy, paste it here so that we don't lose the existing work that we have done already. And let me rename this as main category.xaml. Let me go to the code behind and verify it is fine. So we since, okay, let me change this as well, main category and let me create the constructor. We don't need all of these item dragging and other information that we have added earlier. So let me remove all of these things and just make it as a blank XAML C shop file. Now let me switch back to the main category dot XAML and change the product category to main category here for the X class. So we have everything ready here. So let me also, we don't need any of these, you know, swipes or swipe offsets or drag mode or anything when we are making it as a grid layout. So let me remove these things and make it a simple list view that we have created in the beginning of this session. So let me delete all of these other templates for this main category. And that's all we have. Let me also delete this event so that it doesn't throw any error. Let's keep this binding same to the list category details. It's just the representation that we are changing from a linear layout to a grid layout. So that should help us. Now I'll also remove this label which is not required. So we have a pretty simple, we make this as 50 which looks very even and it's a simple list view 
without a swiping or dragging or any other touch actions. It is a simple list view. We just need to convert this into a grid layout. Now let me go to the app.xaml and copy this flyout item, paste it here and instead of the title will be main categories and the template would be main category which is prompted for us make the route as main category I remove these icons I was doing them for some testing I'll let you know what I was testing in the next set of sessions so that's all we have a main category route we'll call it as main category again for the flyout item as well or categories whatever it is now let's switch to the XAML file the main category dot XAML and then to make it as a grid layout we need to add an items layout option here so how do we do that before the item template let's say list view of sf list view dot items layout so we are saying it to display as a grid layout so we would say that list view of grid layout which is nothing but with a span count that means i want to show the grid layout in two span count which will be two column mode so I will now close this. That's it. Now let's run this application and see the output. Notice that the items are arranged in a grid layout format. However, the output is not looking aesthetically good. Let me do some changes to make it better. Let me switch to the XAML file and let me remove all of the grid grids which are under the frame and we will add only one label under each category. So let me add the quick grid quickly from my other screen. Let me switch back. To the item size and change this item size height request of this frame from 72 to 200 and the width request from 72 to 400 so that the images looks bigger i'll also change this grid column definitions over here and then change this item size of the list view from 94 to 250. let me also correct the image height request and width request so that it aligns with the frame above let me change the width request to 400 as well from 72 that's all let's restart the application and look at the output notice that the grid layout is looking much better with this we have successfully understood the drag and drop swiping and grid layout features of sync fusion list view in the next session we will focus on the rest of the features of list view control till then thank you for listening and have a great day